This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host. In this program, we're going to be meeting with diplomats and foreigners who are here in Pakistan. And we're going to find out what they really think about the country. So let's go. Today we're meeting with the Spanish ambassador, Manuel Duran Jimenez Rico. So let's go find him. Hello. Hello how are you? Good, nice how are you? you? Thank, Thank you, you for much. having me. Of course, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to Spain. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, you've been in Pakistan for about a year now, yeah, right? exactly. How has the experience been so far? Well, it's been great. Yeah? Great. Uh, time flew, by the way, because when I think that I, I arrived a year ago, uh, I can't believe it. You know, really? Uh, there's so, so many things to do that uh, time literally flies. So yeah, it's been a great experience. Hmm. Take into account that it's my first experience as a head of mission. Yeah. So that, uh, that, that already counts. Plus the fact that I have this wonderful place, uh, this wonderful house with this nice garden in a city like Islamabad, which is green and, and uh, very livable. So it's been, it's been fantastic, yeah. Great. And um, which countries did you serve in before? Quite a few. Oh, <laughs> I'm yeah? an old guy. <laughs> oh, come on. you're not to, that old. <laughs> yes. I've been to South Africa, I've been to Hungary, I've been to Argentina, uh, I've been to Lebanon. I have to think about them, there are so many. Uh, yeah, I've Denmark as well. Yeah, I've wow. had quite a long career. Which one was your favorite so far? Oof, very difficult. It's like when you ask a parent who, who is your favorite child, oh. you know? <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> I've been very happy in all of them, really. It's, it's been, uh, I've been very lucky, I guess I'm blessed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you first found out that you were going to be posted to Pakistan, what was your first reaction? Well, I couldn't believe it. It's, uh, it, it, uh, it, first of all, first, because they were offering me uh, a posting as ambassador, which uh, yeah. is already quite a shock. And second, because I knew a lot about Pakistan because my predecessor was a very good friend of mine. Oh, is it? And uh, yeah, every time he came to, to Madrid to, for holidays, mm. we got together, we had lunch together, and he was always talking about Pakistan, of course, in a, always in a good way. Really? And I knew a lot before I came here, so I thought, I'm going to succeed Carlos. This is, this is great. Wow. <laughs> so it was, it was really it was, uh, exciting, and uh, yeah. it, was, it was a good moment. So then you didn't have too many like apprehensions about coming here, even security-wise, maybe? Not even at least. No? Not at all. No, because, you know, uh, I had never been to Pakistan, but in a way I had, because I had heard so many stories yeah. about Pakistan and about daily life, uh, his daily life, mm. uh, in a friendly way. He's my friend, so he yeah. would tell me the truth. If he had been very unhappy, he would have told me. Yeah. So, no, no, no apprehension at all. I knew what his life uh, was about. I knew all the places he had visited, and then I thought, hmm, I'm going to do the same, so this is great. <laughs> yeah. Was there anything that really surprised you about Pakistan, though, like, although you had heard a lot? Well, uh, the, the city itself, Islamabad, surprised me a lot. I never thought it would be so, so green, first of all. Mm. I thought the traffic, you know, being an Asian capital, the traffic should be a mess, yeah. and it's not. <laughs> That's a surprise, exactly. surprise. And then uh, I did not know about the possibilities of hiking and mm. trekking, uh, which is a great surprise because I try to go every Sunday oh, to the really? Mangala Hills. Oh, yes. that's nice. Uh, that's surprising. And about the country, uh, I was surprised at, uh, at the beauty of the north, even though I haven't been everywhere still. Yeah. I still have two more years, inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I was very surprised at the, at the fantastic landscapes. And, uh, and also the, the possibilities to travel because they are, you know, it's very well connected. You can fly to Lahore, to Karachi, it's like... Yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, I was uh, very surprised. And how would you compare Pakistan to all the other countries you've been posted to? Well, it's very different and uh, I thank God for that because if all the postings were the same, yeah. it would be a very boring job. That's true. <laughs> and the, the good thing about it is that every country is different. Yeah. I would compare it um, with Lebanon, for example. There are many similarities. People are very hospitable too. The food is great, like in yeah. Lebanon. Uh, people always invite you home and they display all the food that they have in the house for you. That's similar. The climate is similar to Lebanon. Is it? Uh, of course, Pakistan and Denmark are a bit different. Yeah, that's... Yeah. <laughs> the weather is uh, quite different. Uh, South Africa, yeah, the weather is quite similar. 
and uh, the possibilities of traveling around the country make, makes it also quite similar to Pakistan. There's a lot to see in South Africa. Um, but they all, all these countries are very different from each other. Mm. In Argentina, for example, where I was also posted, I don't know if I mentioned it before, I think I didn't. Uh, they speak my language, yeah, so that makes it easy. easier. There's a proximity, of course. a cultural proximity with yeah. Argentinians that I do not have with Pakistanis, of course, because of the language barrier. Even if I use English, of course. Mm. Um, yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's different. And as I said in the beginning, thank God for that. That makes it more exciting. Yeah, of course. And what makes Pakistan an important country for Spain? Why is it important for you to have an embassy here? Well, it's uh, well um, the location, the strategic location of the country, and the fact that Pakistan is playing a role in international relations, mm. a bigger role uh, than before. Um, also, the commercial side, uh, 200 million people, it's a, it's a good market yeah. for, for Spain. Uh, that makes it very interesting. And, and also because we were here from the beginning. I mean, Spain opened an embassy since the beginning of the existence of, uh, of Pakistan, right. which, makes, uh, which uh, makes it only obvious that we want to keep being here and uh, seeing how the country keeps growing. And uh, yeah, many, many reasons for, mm. for, being in, for being here, of course. Yeah. And uh, what does Spain focus on mainly? What areas are the most important here for the embassy? For the Pakistan? embassy? Well, mainly, as I said, the, the commercial aspect is very important. Mm. Uh, now that Pakistan is opening itself more to tourism and to investment and to trade, um, I can see the effect because many. I, I come now. I come from a meeting with a with a businessman from Spain who arrived this morning. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, and he came directly to the office to talk to me, hmm. and that happens quite a, quite a, like every week. I, really? I, I meet I meet up with a Spanish businessmen. I mean, I'm not saying that they're flocking to yeah. Pakistan, <laughs> but it's happening. And there, I don't I don't know if they will end up investing directly in Pakistan, but hmm. I know that they are interested. In different in different fields, so that we focus a lot on that. I have a commercial attaché, of course, who mm. helps me in these issues, and um, yeah, and, uh, and and the cultural exchange is also quite important. We're trying to to uh, to show what we do uh, culturally here in Pakistan because there's not uh, much knowledge of about course. Spanish culture, the yeah. Spanish language. Spanish language is also one of, the, one of the aspects that I would like to focus on because there's no Instituto Cervantes, it's the equivalent of the, you know, the, the, the German Institute or the French Institute. There's not, yeah, the we have it all Institute. over the world, yeah. but we don't have it here. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, because it, you know, it's uh, so far the, 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 the central Instituto Cervantes in Madrid uh, has not thought that it's important to open one here and I'm pushing them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all a matter of money, of course, of uh, finding the financing to open because it's a big project. It's, uh, it's basically a school of language. It's a, basically a cultural center hmm. uh, uh, where you can learn Spanish, but also different cultural activities take place uh, weekly. So it is a big project. It requires a huge investment yeah. and, uh, and it's, a pub it's a public institution, by the way. It's not a private mm. school. Mm. It's uh, more than a school, it's like a center for the learning of uh, the language, not only of Spanish actually, but also the Spanish, the language, the official languages of Spain, like so Catalan. All, all languages. Eventually, yeah, yeah all the languages mm. that, we, that we speak in Spain uh, could also be taught in this, in this school. So um, I'm trying to, to promote the, the opening of an Instituto Cervantes. What we have so far is a private school in Lahore that has the, that officially can examine the students to, to get the official uh, diploma of the Cervantes. So it's a step yeah. forward. <laughs> At least uh, there is a private school, I insist it's private, it's not a public one. It's a private school, but you can learn Spanish there and you can obtain a diploma that is official. It's recognized mm. by the Cervantes uh, Institute of Spain. So do you think the global perception is changing slowly yeah, though? Is. Yeah, It's changing because also, uh, what I mentioned about tourism, uh, in my experience, more and more hikers are coming to the north mm. for, for, you know, to climb mountains. Yeah, and to, mountaineers, and exactly. Mountaineers and uh, also cyclers who love cycling. Yeah. They come, they've, they've, they, I've, I've met them actually, sometimes they come here to yeah, visit yeah, yeah. and say hi. And uh, of course they take 
beautiful images of Pakistan back home. They publish them in the social media. That, that also adds to the good image of Pakistan. It's uh, exactly. not just the press. It's, uh, nowadays, it's all about social media. And Absolutely. people you know, post on Instagram beautiful images of Pakistan. So it's changing. The perception is changing. Yeah, Absolutely. hopefully. And maybe one day we'll have the Spanish king here as well. Wow, why not? <laughs> of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, try to, I'll try to push that forward. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be great. Because uh, Her Majesty the Queen of uh, Holland is coming, uh, yeah, yeah. It's coming next week. So it's becoming a trend. So exactly. now, now it's, the, next... it's my turn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that can be a little project for you. Yes. <laughs> So a few years ago, I actually visited Barcelona and I was very surprised to find so many Pakistanis there. <laughs> yes. So there's actually a small community living there. Yeah. Well, it's not that small. Oh yeah? <laughs> I think, well, the, the official figures are not clear, but they're like 80,000 people. Okay. Um, yes. Um, some people say that in, in the whole of Spain, more than 100,000. Wow. But yet, yeah, specifically in Barcelona, I think that uh, the number could reach 80 or 70 or 80,000 really? people. Yes, yeah, it's true. And they're very integrated. Some of them, well, most of them speak perfect Spanish hmm. and Catalan, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, one, uh, very recently, uh, one of these Pakistanis uh, came back to Pakistan with, a, with his project, with his business. It's a supermarket called Condis. He started in Spain and he, he has, I don't know how many branches in Spain. He told me the other day, but I can't remember. Yeah. He's of Pakistani origin, mm. but he, he, he has this business, uh, this very successful business. He's had it for many years. And he opened his first branch in Pakistan uh, recently. Okay. So that's a great thing that, you know, they, they, he, he went and he came back and he came exactly. back with a, with the product of his efforts and his hard work, which is this uh, fantastic supermarket. So it's a good, it's a good thing, yeah. Yeah. The hardworking, uh, hardworking citizens. Some are Spanish already. They hold the Spanish passport. Exactly. Some yeah. aren't still. Some, some come back to Pakistan because they, they just want to come back to their families. Some holding a passport, uh, a Spanish passport. Some without it. So yeah, there are, you, you've got all kinds of cases. Mm. Uh, but here is a success story, for example. Exactly. This, this, yeah. This, uh, Mar this man with this uh, beautiful project, he wants to open more and more in Pakistan. So. And why Barcelona? Like, why are they concentrated there? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> no, I think that um, uh, many many of the Pakistanis that went there come from the same village. Many mm -hmm. come from Gujarat. Uh, and and they chose Barcelona probably because it's a beautiful city. It could be. Uh, yeah. I would choose that too. I would choose Barcelona too. Uh, they, they they have a good taste. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe because they it, it has a, the first ones went to Barcelona and then they called other people from the same village. Right. And that's how it often works. It yeah. Often works like that, and that's why they chose uh, Barcelona. I guess that's the. That's the, the thing that they they were they wanted to join the families and and they started to go there and it grew and grew and grew and well that's amazing so you have a little Pakistani community in yes. in Spain and not a lot of people know that that's yeah, so interesting right, yes. but not only in Barcelona eh? I mean yeah, you go elsewhere. to Madrid you will find small businesses run by Pakistani people and yes it's uh, it's quite common and the rest in the rest of Spain too mm. uh, but usually of course usually. Why Barcelona and Madrid, big cities, logical, because you have more opportunities in big cities. Of course. Uh, but uh, I, I know for a fact that some also go to more rural areas and they're doing quite well, so. Yeah, but that's still somehow surprising for me because uh, Pakistanis tend to go to countries, like English speaking countries usually, and I don't see a lot of Pakistanis learning Spanish, so mm -hmm. it's true. quite surprising that they choose to go. It's to very true. Spain. As I said before, the teaching of Spanish in Pakistan there's a lot to do. Yeah, uh, I'm a bit worried about that because it's not taught at mm. schools. And yeah. uh, Namul here has a department of Spanish, mm. uh, yes. national, yes. Uh, which National University of Modern Languages, which is great. I visit them often, and uh, I'm very fond of their work. I mm. like very much what they do. But it's not enough. So that doesn't mean that, um, which means that they do not go to Spain because they speak Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> because they've learned it in Pakistan, unfortunately. They go there without knowing Spanish, but they learn it very quickly. And, uh, and the adaptation is uh, formidable. So uh, why not? Why not Spain? Exactly. Uh, and the language is not that difficult, I think. Yeah. It's not a difficult language yeah. to learn. So the ones that I have met, they have, they're fluent. 
mm. and, and they went there, they arrived there without knowing a word. So wow. it is possible. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And uh, when did this immigration start to, to Barcelona or Spain in general from Pakistan? Well, I think, uh, I'm not too sure, but I think it started not so long ago. Okay. Maybe, yeah, maybe 20 or 30 years ago, not more. Yeah, so there's only like maybe the second generation yeah. now. No, 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 it. so yeah. far, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this girl might be, yeah, 20, 23, 24. I think she's, she hasn't yet finished. Yeah. So she must be 22. Exactly, exactly that, uh, that is the, the, the second generation, but there's no third generation not still. Not yet, but hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take a short break. I'll see you when we come back. Welcome back. I'm here in conversation with the Spanish ambassador. So, Mr. Ambassador, I wanted to ask you about trade between Spain and Pakistan. What are the main exports and imports? Well, Pakistan mainly exports textiles mm -hmm. to Spain. Um, I'm sure everybody's familiar with Zara or Zara, <laughs> pronounced yes. in English. Zara in Spanish, the big, uh, the big uh, conglomerate of uh, companies. It's called Inditex actually, but uh, there are different brands that maybe Pakistanis yes. are familiar with, like mm. uh, well, Pull&Bear, Mango, uh, Zara, of course. Yes. All these brands they they import uh, the textile, made it a lot of the textiles from Pakistan. And yeah, when it comes to the exports, uh, it's uh, Pakistan exports basically, basically uh, textiles, that's all. That's all. That uh, Pakistan imports from Spain um, tiles, the Spanish tiles are very popular here mm -hmm. um, and very good, of course, yeah. very good quality, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> and uh, also olive oil, uh, food, food products also, Okay. Um, uh, biscuits and then technology mm -hmm. and then um, bigger thing, so to speak. Uh, we Many of the airports uh, in Pakistan have the bridges, are from Spain. Really? Um, and also other parts of the airports and uh, the, of the infrastructures of the airports uh, are done by Spanish companies. Oh, I didn't know um, that. Yeah, the, the, this is basically what we, what we export. Um, and, uh, and yeah, Pakistan's, for now, it's basically textiles, but mm. uh, who knows? That yeah. can change. And, Maybe we can uh, end up importing mangoes from Pakistan. I'm, I'm that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how do you think uh, trade could be increased between the two countries? Well, I think that um, in the case of, for example, in the case of food, food products, we are a bit worried because uh, there are a lot of uh, non-tariff barriers. Like uh, now, the, the the products that we used to export without any difficulties face the difficulty of, of having to be labeled in Urdu and oh, in, with see. the halal seal, yes. but yeah. from origin, you know, because before it was enough with a sticker. But uh, of course that is going to make it difficult for some uh, products that we were planning to import. The Spanish companies are thinking, thinking it twice because they have to elaborate, they have to create uh, uh, machines especially to label right. these boxes or mm, cans or difficult. bottles in Urdu. Yeah. So I think that um, to increase this uh, flow, this trade, it would be good if, if, the, if the hindrances were, were less. Um, and also, yeah, this is basically what, and, and make it easy for the, for the exporter, for the Spanish exporter to, to bring here certain products. And uh, yeah, that, that, that would help. Really. And you mentioned that you get a lot of like Spanish businessmen visiting all the yeah. time. So there is a lot of interest in Spain. There's interest, yeah. Uh, uh, somebody from the steel industry in Spain has been visiting different cities in Pakistan. Um, somebody wanting to, to export uh, drinks, uh, non-alcoholic drinks, but with, with, a, with a special touch like a, uh, apple juice that is sparkling and things okay. like that. They've been recently here and there's quite a big market here for that. Um, yeah, and today I had a meeting with somebody from the uh, from ele an electrical company also wanting to explore the market. Mm. Yes, yeah, the, the, I, I, keep, I keep meeting with, uh, with Spanish businessmen who are not afraid to come to yeah. Pakistan because I see them in my office yeah. and they would love to, to start something here. Yeah. Mm, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. In terms of Spanish products, you mentioned 
olive oil, tiles. Uh, what else do you think Pakistani consumers would be interested in in terms of Spanish products? Well, the consumer, um, the consumer who goes to the shop and wants to buy something different, something he or she cannot find in the, in, a, mm. in, in normally. It would be food related, of course, okay. and, and yeah, um, especially olives, canned products. We have we, our industry in canned fish is huge. Really, there is a special, there's a very delicious kind of tuna, tuna fish called uh, bonito, which translated into English would be white tuna. Okay, so it's a the family of the of the, the same family of fish. And Spain uh, produces the best, I would say, in the world in in, in olive oil. Really? And that, that is a product that actually one can find in certain supermarkets in, in okay. Pakistan, but a very high price, but yeah. it's like a delicatessen. Mm. Um, but apart from, from uh, this tuna, which is quite exclusive and quite expensive, you, there are hundreds of varieties of fish that are canned, and that's, that's very popular also wherever it, it's exported. Um, healthy food also is very, it's very developed in Spain. There are certain brands that I have seen in Pakistan, by the way, of biscuits, sugar-free biscuits, or oh, healthy, yeah, yeah. healthy kind of uh, oh, cereals yeah. with, with a Spanish brand. Um, we were about to start exporting um, a chocolate powder for kids that is very popular in, in Spain. I mean, every Spanish person has had hot chocolate with uh, yeah, it's a powder. It's very popular. It's very popular, and that they were they were exploring the possibility of exporting, and and now they're. They're not sure because of all these conditions. Oh, um, that's so that's that's another product that I'm sure Pakistanis would appreciate, yes. would love. Uh, also, the Spanish version of Nutella that everybody knows. Uh, it's, a, it's a Spanish product also that is uh, chocolate based. Mm. That yeah. that we wanted to to bring it here to Pakistan. There are many things because you know uh, Pakistanis travel to Spain and yeah. many live in Barcelona even, exactly. and they, they they know what they like. Uh, and, and they want to bring it to Pakistan. So at the end, it's very easy to know what the Pakistanis might appreciate from Spain because we have the information. We have this Spanish community, this Pakistani community living in, in Spain who can tell us exactly. what, what, uh, what Pakistanis would appreciate. Yeah, and what about the other way around? I mean, you mentioned mangoes yes. as one possibility, of course. What other um, Pakistani products could Spanish people be interested in? Well. Spanish people, well, I can tell you what I buy for my family when I go back to Spain. Yeah. And you can imagine what it is. I buy beautiful shawls. Fashion, the fashion industry of, of uh, Pakistan is amazing and exotic for yeah. the Spanish consum consumer. So um, maybe maybe Spanish women would be very interested in, in, in buying Pakistani fashion. Why not? Um, that, that, that is a possibility. And when it comes to um, food, of course, apart from the mangoes. Imagine Pakistan produces so much. Exactly. Uh, the f fruits that we might not find in Spain. But uh, I don't know much about how difficult it is to export in terms yeah. of, the f of, the, of the maintenance, of ke keeping the product uh, uh, well. But that, that, that's something that we could, uh, could, we could be happy with it. Mm. So you do see some potential there. Of course, yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah. So aside from trade, um, the other important uh, area that you focus on, you mentioned, is culture. And you've organized many cultural events here. What, what have you done? Well, in this, during my one year tenure here in Pakistan, we have seen a um, guitar player performing both in Lahore, in Lahore, Karachi and Islamabad. We've had a fantastic flamenco group. Really? Performing in the three cities too, that was very successful. <laughs> it was beautiful. Um, we were well, right now. Uh, let's talk about today. Today, this afternoon at five uh, at five p.m., there will be the opening of, uh, of a photo exhibition. Uh, it is a very beautiful project called Lost in Spain. It's a, a Pakistani photographer who spent 15 days or even more in Spain, taking a lot of pictures, 8,000 pictures. Oh. And uh, today we are showing under the umbrella of the Islamabad Cultural Festival, which is a fantastic initiative, by the way, because it's like the first time that it happens. Really? Islamabad. Yeah, it? it's a beautiful wow. project that has particip participants from all over the world. 
and well, Spain is participating. That's great. With this exhibition, photo exhibition, with another exhibition uh, by a painter sculptor who is exhibiting his work together with Goya uh, engravings because he wants to compare uh, his paintings with Goya's paintings, so it's a fascinating project wow. as well. There will be Spanish movies as well because there will really? be also a, like a mini film festival within oh, the I cultural see. festival. Okay. So right now a lot of things are happening and, at, uh, and in December we'll have a cello and piano concert happening in the, again in Lahore, uh, Karachi and Islamabad. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're doing quite a few things and, uh, and there will be more in April. We want to do uh, next April, we want to do something very exciting because we want to put together uh, a flamenco group together with, um, with a local group because the Sindhi folklore of uh, Sufi chanting and singing yeah. uh, is the origin of flamenco actually. Is it? So yeah, so, so this would be a beautiful idea. We're going to put together uh, artists from both countries. We're going to lock them up in a room and let them just work out <laughs> something because they're going to do something probably exciting because mm -hmm. the, the cante hondo, which is the, the way flamenco singers sing, mm -hmm. literally means deep deep chant, cante yeah. hondo, comes from precisely really? from the cavalli and the, and the, the Sufi wow. chants. So it's, it's uh, also the dancing, by the way, the flamenco dance uh, comes from here, Who from knew? this part of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I will, we will put together the dancers so that they can come up with a choreography that shows clearly that, uh, that they're intermingled and also the singers so that they can mm, create something and I know I know I know for a fact that artists do that in 24 hours I mean they're so good exactly <laughs> they, yeah. they start improvising and they can come up with a with a whole show hmm. and that's of course there will be also there will be a solo performance of the of the flamenco group and the Pakistani group but the, we want the exciting part will be when they they, they create the fusion. Yeah, that sounds amazing. It's going to be very, very nice. Do you think a lot of Pakistanis know about this connection between flamenco and Sufism? No, no I didn't don't. know either, yeah. But the ones who know about it, they keep insisting. Uh, they keep telling me, you have to do something with this from, the, from day one when mm. I arrived. I met up with some Pakistanis who love music. Yeah. And they immediately they told me, did you know that this is what we're expecting. I said, yes, yes, don't worry, we'll do it, we'll do yeah? it. Yeah? Wow. And uh, so what is the actual connection? I mean, Spain and Pakistan are very far away from each other. How did this music and dance travel all the well, way because, to Spain? Yes, because the, well, basically the, the, the people who, who started with flamenco in Spain are gypsies. Mm, and gypsies the Roman come, people, yeah, yes. Yeah, the Roman people, mm. they come from here. Yeah. And that's well. To, of course, flamenco also has a lot of Arabic influence. Oh yeah, Arabic of influence. course. Yeah. Um, so that's why flamenco is so fascinating because it's a mixture of a lot of cultures. But one of them is precisely uh, the the way of singing here, the, the the rhythms and the and the movements of the body clearly come from here. Mm. And if you add to that also the the Arab the Arab uh, influence because the Arabs were for eight centuries. In, in our country, so that is flamenco and flamenco dancing and flamenco singing. Yeah, and is there a lot of interest towards Spanish culture in Pakistan? Yes, there is. What do you think was your most popular event so far? Well, flamenco clearly. Yeah, really? yeah, because you know the way. Yeah, flamenco is so connected with 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 Pakistani mm. yeah. folklore exactly. that it, it it really uh, it ignites in people something because it's they, they, they recognize it and yeah clearly flamenco is the most popular but uh, some movies that I have I, I, I screened a movie here here at, at home for the um, students of Spanish at the Namun mm. and uh, they connected with the movie immediately it's a it's a comedy it's a light comedy I didn't want to screen something heavy it's a very light comedy uh, about uh, happening in, in Madrid in Spain and the, 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 these, these kids, well, they're not kids anymore, these uh, students were fascinated by the movie with, uh, in Spanish, with the subtitles, of yeah. course. And uh, so I, I believe that it, if we screened more movies in Pakistan, more Spanish movies, people would, would start uh, appreciating them and, and liking them too. That's true. And I think like a lot of Pakistanis are really like looking for this kind of events, like they're Absolutely. starved for yeah. entertainment. So mm -hmm. I'm sure 
I really appreciate there will it. Do, there will be some movies also in this festival and we'll do more. We will try to, because movies is a very easy way of uh, and cheap for us, you know, because mm. we don't have a huge budget for cultural events, unfortunately. Mm. So creating, uh, organizing a film festival can mobilize people and at no, at not, not, not at a high cost. So we will try to do that. But we will still bring flamenco performers because you know when you see something live, that's different. That's amazing. It's a yeah. different. It's a different story. <laughs> Absolutely. And Spain also has a rich Muslim history. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, yes. Uh, most of the of my Pakistani friends uh, always tell me that when they go to the Alhambra in Granada, mm -hmm. yeah. they feel something really special because they can feel the connection with the, with the Muslim roots. Yeah. And yes, of course, Al-Andalus, well, Spain was, uh, uh, was uh, Muslim for 800 years. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and it was actually, it was the, the height of the Islamic culture. Absolutely. The, uh, of, the golden uh, age. Uh, yeah, yeah, golden age, yeah, exactly. The, the, the golden age of the Islamic culture in science, uh, in literature, uh, philosophy, uh, so that a lot of that remains still in Spain and remains in our in our culture, in our language. Our language has a lot of Arabic words. Really, many, a lot, huh. a lot of them. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's a Latin language, as yeah. you know, but uh, it contains. I don't know. They they they, they, they have studied that, but more than twenty thousand um, Arabic words that are clearly Arabic. Really, uh, we we say, for example, ojalá, ojalá is inshallah. Oh, it's okay. It's identical, practically. Oh, and I ojalá. didn't know that. It Does it exactly also mean the same. the same thing? Exactly the same. Ojalá. Okay. And, uh, and yeah, and then uh, Cordoba, the Cordoba, everybody, all those Pakistanis who go to Spain try to go to the mosque of, of Cordoba course. because it's really something breathtaking. Um, the whole of this, the whole of Al Andalus, Andalusia, is uh, is brimming with uh, Islamic culture. Yeah. And uh, not only not only the stones, but you know the as I said, the language is exactly. and, and our looks also. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of yeah. There's a, there's a past there that can link us with Pakistan very easily. Exactly. And that's the religious link. Yeah. So I think it's time now to have some tea. Okay. And to get to know my garden. Okay. Because it's quite nice and Would the weather is perfect. It. Yeah. Let's okay, do that. Let's go. Great. We're going to take a short break. I'll see you when we're back. Welcome back. I'm here with the Spanish ambassador, and what a wonderful garden you have here. Thank you. It's so yeah, beautiful. It's, it's really nice. It's uh, we use it uh, for the national day, for example. That's oh, yeah? when we make the most of it mm -hmm. because it's uh, we put a lot of lights, uh, red carpets, and, wow. and the palm trees give the. Many, many southern cities of Spain have palm trees. Exactly, So this reminds yeah. a little bit of Valencia or... or yeah, you know, so any, any, it could be in Spain. It could be in Spain. <laughs> that, I think that's why the, the architect chose, chose mm. palm trees for the garden. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, the house was built in the 90s by a very, very famous and remarkable Spanish architect. Wow. And he did, uh, he did a great job because it's, it's an auditorium because the acoustics are great inside. So we've exactly. organized sometimes even uh, concerts inside. Really? Movie, wow. as I told you before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he thought not only about the residence, but about a meeting point, a center, or even a cultural center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why the, the garden is also perfectly equipped for a concert. Exactly. You could just put some chairs and there's, there can be a concert here or a flamenco yeah. show, for example. That's which we're going to do in April, by the way. It will take place Amazing. here. So. Yeah, and then you have a little pool where you and can go pool, for yeah, a swim. No, it's, uh, <laughs> He thought of everything, so exactly. I cannot complain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's sit down yeah. and have a cup sure. of tea. Sure, maybe sure, try sure. some Spanish, some Spanish speciality. Yeah, that would be lovely. Please. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. That's it here. Thank you. You mentioned that you've gotten to travel at least a little bit to the north, and where else have you been? Well, I've been to Chitral which was oh. wonderful, incredible. Uh, I still have to go to Gilgit. Yeah. And, uh, but I've been uh, also in KPK. I've been, of course, Lahore and Karachi. I go as often as I can. Mm. And um, yeah, and uh, near Islamabad, Taxila, of course, you know, the, the, the typical sites, Stachelbait as well. Um, and uh, I still have to go to the 
upper north, but uh, it will come in time. By yeah. the way, this is uh, something very Spanish. Oh, okay, great. It's called croquetas. Amazing. And it's like, um, it's delicious. It's some something fried. It has bechamel and, oh. uh, and um, it can, they can be made with anything. It can be with chicken, with, uh, with uh, vegetables. And uh, I hope you, you like them. Yeah, They're let's nice. try some. Yes, <laughs> of course. Thank you. Wow. Croquetas. Yeah. <laughs> it's in a, any Spanish party you will find croquetas. It's, it's like a tapas, and, yeah. It's like a tapas and kids love it too. Yeah. So it's a very it's a very family kind of uh, thing. Yeah, and I'm sure you have like um, staff here who cooks for you. Mm. Are they Pakistani or Spanish? The cook is Pakistani mm. and he's excellent at making Spanish things like croquetas or really? Spanish omelette. Wow. He makes it much better than many Spanish cooks, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So he must have worked here for quite a while at the mm. embassy then yeah. to learn all of mm -hmm. that. I guess um, he had good um, good teachers also. Mm. And um, But he can cook almost anything. But when it comes to Spanish specialities, he's, uh, he's excellent. Paella, of course. Of course, He's very yeah. good at that. <laughs> mm. And I'm sure that's very difficult to find in Pakistan. Otherwise, like Spanish food, it's not it available. Is, it is. Maybe that's something um, I should work on also, like the yeah. possibility of encouraging um, some entrepreneur to open a, a Spanish restaurant if somebody's yeah. listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, Why not? <laughs> yeah, maybe one of the uh, Pakistani community in, in Barcelona. In they Barcelona. Could come back and start it, it something could here. Because I think it would actually work. Why not? I mean, it's... Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Spanish uh, cuisine is uh, Mediterranean, and we okay. use ingredients that you can use here. In uh, I mean, imagine paella is like a biryani, so right, there exactly. are similarities. And yeah, why why absolutely. would not uh, what why not a restaurant in yeah. uh, Lahore, Karachi, Islamabad, wherever yeah. a Spanish restaurant? How do you like Islamabad as a city? Like you mentioned, you were really surprised that it's so green and and not so chaotic, but like. Just in terms of everyday life, do you like to go out to restaurants here a lot? Course, what do you like yes. to do? You asked me before uh, if I was surprised by anything when I came here. Mm. Actually, yes, I thought there were no. The, the, I, I, I don't. I don't I never imagined there was such a big choice of restaurants yeah. in, in Islamabad. For some reason, I thought it was all confined to the hotels and. Oh yeah. And no. There are a lot of very nice restaurants, exactly. nice spots in the city where you can have dinner or lunch, and it's not within a hotel, which is okay as well. Exactly. I mean, I like yeah. they have wonderful restaurants here too, but that was a surprising thing. And mm. I try, I try as much as I can. I try to go to the different uh, restaurants of Islamabad, and yeah. as I said before, um, it's it's a very green city. So even if you don't actually walk. I, there's something that I miss. I'm not going to say everything positive. Of course. <laughs> I miss walking. Yeah, that's a big it's not one a city, for a lot of people. Yeah, it's not a city where you can actually walk. Yes. And uh, But you can compensate for that by going to the Margala Hills and exactly. trekking for three hours, yeah. <laughs> which I try to do on Sundays. Wow. Or you three go hours. to Regina Park and mm. just take a long walk. Yeah. You don't walk uh, like you walk in cities that are prepared for that, but you can actually walk if you want to because exactly. you can. You have these other options. Yeah, and I mean it's not like a security thing that it's too dangerous to walk no. or anything, but it's a city that's built for cars. For cars, I think. yes. Yeah. Like so many others. I mean, uh, in the West many as other well. capitals, of course, yeah. in the West. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's one thing. Talking about similarities with other postings that mm. I had, I mean, South Africa was like that too. You don't walk in South Africa. You just take your car because the big avenues, it's, it's all made. Yeah. Pretoria, the capital, is also a new capital like Islamabad. Yeah. Uh, an administrative capital. And it's you just don't walk. Exactly. And I think it has something to do with the weather also. Like when it's plus 40, you don't want to walk You don't outside. want to walk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you have to substitute that with gym or Exactly. Trekking or other, uh, any kind of activity that you can get hold of. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Do you think there is potential for the growth of tourism in Pakistan? Absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Of course, uh, think many things have to change. Infrastructures are not sufficient to mm. to to create to, to turn Pakistan into a, like a number one tourist destination. Mm. But that you know, the solution is very easy. Just Build the roads. Yeah, um, investment. Open investment. Open more hotels. Raise the quality of the services because at the end of the day, it's all about the services. 
if you increase the quality of um, hotels and uh, the way they serve you at the hotels and the services that they provide to the customer, yeah. people will start coming. Exactly. Of course. Did you have like a favorite uh, city or place that you visited in Pakistan so far? Well, of well, I have to admit that my favorite city so far is Islamabad because really? I feel so good here yeah. and and everything is at hand. Exactly. Um, it's very comfortable. The, the traffic is great. I, it takes me like 10, 15 minutes maximum to go from from this house to anywhere. Exactly. In Islamabad. Yeah. So I I think that my favorite city is Islamabad. Mm. Funnily enough. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Of course. It, it's got nothing to do with the city, but Shitral and the Kalash Valley were just amazing yeah, as an experience. Sure. But uh, as I said, I have to also go to to the north, to Gilgit, Baltistan, and Still, uh, yeah. I'll do it, I'll do it. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> Ojalá. 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 Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned this is your first posting as an ambassador. Mm. How much do you get to interact with like regular Pakistanis? Or is it all just official dinners and meetings and... So on. Well, actually, yes. Let's face it. Yeah. Uh, usually, when I meet Pakistani people, it's uh, within the the, the official mm. activities that I that I have to attend. Yeah. But I, I'm also invited to private houses mm. where I meet Pakistanis just for the for fun, to yeah. just have dinner and enjoy the moment. And that is when I feel free to you know to talk about uh, things that I don't have to talk about and I cannot talk about when it's terribly official exactly and uh, yeah I have I have the chance of course to meet Pakistanis and don't forget that here at the embassy there, there's a lot of Pakistani stuff exactly and I interact with them and I yeah. ask them about the families and so yes I have I have the, the possibility of, of, uh, of meeting Pakistani people of course I mean otherwise w w what, yes. what a terrible thing that yeah. would be if I spent Being three years of my here. life here <laughs> <laughs> and I, I could not speak with Pakistanis. No, of course, of course, that's I do. That's great. Yeah. And I saw that you also, like you mentioned, you visited the Language Institute here at the Normal. Yeah, Nimble. yeah. I visited a, a Spanish school. It's, it's a private one, small yeah. one in Lahore. Uh, and uh, and well, I talked to the to the owner of the institute. She's a Spanish lady, yeah. living here in really? Pakistan. And uh, she's very happy because she 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 can she tells me that there's a lot of interest. That she can hardly cope with all the really? all the people that want to learn Spanish. That's, That's why I would love to, you know, to somehow uh, bring the the Instituto Cervantes here yeah. and try to try to open an official language school that has a. The backing of the of the Spanish government, which is precisely what the Cervantes is, exactly like the French have and the, the Germans have, and uh, many other many other countries. So yeah, because uh, you know the problem with span with with the promotion of Spanish is that it promotes itself so easily that yes. we don't sometimes we don't make the effort <laughs> mm. because people many people have confessed to me that just by watching the telenovelas on television, yeah, they learn Spanish. They are mesmerized by the stories and by the by the chapters. So, yeah, and they they learn they learn Spanish. Pakistanis are Pakistan, watching yes, telenovelas. Yes. Wow. telenovelas, you know, and, and especially now with Netflix and exactly. all these uh, so platforms. Exactly, so easily accessible. And they and they actually learn, and hmm. then of course Spanish is growing and growing in the United States and of all over course. the world because uh, it's it's people people just learn it without us government of Spain making any effort yeah and that's a bad thing you know because exactly. we, we we get lazy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because any, everybody learns Spanish anyway and the, and yeah. the, the, the number of Spanish speaking people grows every year mm. and that makes us feel too comfortable in a comfort zone mm. that that is not uh, that it shouldn't be like that I mean yeah. we should uh, promote it and then that's why I will uh, I will do my best to, to try to uh, to, to bring Spanish teachers here to Pakistan and to to encourage Pakistanis to learn the language it's spoken by so many people it's really worth it you know it's like uh, it's not uh, a language that they will not use in the future they will probably it will op probably open doors for them if Absolutely. they learn Spanish yeah so it's an investment <laughs> There's another interesting Spanish project here, I think in Lahore or maybe in some other cities as well. You started a football school. Okay, yes, yeah, it's in Lahore. There, there, there are two, in Islamabad and in Lahore. Okay. In Islamabad, uh, a Spanish, um, Spanish man who married a Pakistani woman and he's, uh, he has a 
has kids here, he lives here. He is an expert in coaching and he has a beautiful project that is already, has already started. Of school, it's a school. It's called the, actually, it has this, the name Spain on it, the Spanish School of Football or something like that. Yeah. And it's already working in Islamabad. Okay. That's one thing. And then there's another project and that is uh, sponsored by a Spanish team, Atletico de Madrid. Okay. Not Real Madrid, Atletico de Madrid. Mm -hmm. I want to make it clear, <laughs> otherwise people will get very angry with me. And uh, yeah. I've, of course I've met them, wonderful people. And they're doing a great job in, in Lahore. This is in Lahore. Mm. They're doing a great job. They teach, well, they coach kids. And um, even if well, cricket is a national game, of course, yeah. we all know that. Football is growing, it's growing. Yeah. And because the uh, kids uh, follow the league, the Spanish league and the, the European course, league, yeah. they are really interested. Yeah. And uh, there's, something, there's something lacking. And that's, uh, that's, uh, mm. that's what this team, these two schools, Want to, they want to fill this gap somehow. And they think there's a, there's a potential for They do, yeah, here. absolutely. I think, I think more schools will be open, not necessarily by Spanish <laughs> coaches, but more schools will open because football is really catching up here in Pakistan. There haven't been many official visits between Pakistan and Spain. Is there anything to be expected in the future? I mean, maybe not the king yet, but <laughs> anyone else maybe, coming? Maybe not. Yeah. Well, actually, yes. Um, um, there's going to be, I don't know if you've heard about the Global Conference on Climate Change that was yeah, supposed sure. to be taking place in Santiago de Chile. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going to take place in Chile, but the Chilean government uh, has uh, can count now on the support of the Spanish government for the organization of the summit itself. So the conference is going to take place in Madrid in, on the 2nd of December, okay. from the 2nd of December till the 13th of December. Mm, the president of Chile is also hosting together with the, with the Spanish government who will provide all the, you know, the, 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 the place and the, the, the city of Madrid, yeah. which is a nice city to visit. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, of course, there will be a Pakistani delegation uh, traveling to Spain. Uh, and I'm very happy about that because that will create a new connection between Spain of and Pakistan. Course, yeah. it's, a global, it's a global conference and it's, it's quite an important one. And, uh, and then we hope, we hope that the participation will be high from the different uh, countries and uh, Pakistan is definitely participating. That's great. Okay, now it's time for our rapid fire round. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Shalwar kameez or Western clothes? Well, Western clothes. I'm more used to it. <laughs> Lahore or Karachi? Lahore. I like it more, sorry. Okay, <laughs> Fair I enough. hope nobody will be offended, but I like it more. <laughs> ah, it's fine. <laughs> Flamenco or Bhangra? Flamenco. Very patriotic. Mm. Lahore Fort or Alhambra? Alhambra. Madrid or Barcelona? Madrid. I'm from Madrid. Yeah. You're from Madrid. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense then. <laughs> <laughs> cricket or football? Football. Do you don't know anything about cricket, do I you? I know nothing about cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Croquettes or pakoras? Pakoras, actually. Really? I love them. This time, I'll go for the Pakistani option. Yeah. yeah. I Great. love them, yeah. <laughs> Although they were delicious. <laughs> yes, but I, I love pakoras. Absolutely. Great. Tapas or chaat? Tapas. Because it's more variety. That's true. Tapas can yeah. be anything, actually. That's why exactly. I chose tapas. Any, any portion of food is a tapa. True. So it gives you more chances. <laughs> yeah. Churros or gulab jamun? Churros. <laughs> With chocolates, <Yes>. preferably. <laughs> Caspacho or dal? Dal. Yeah. Actually, I'm crazy about dal. Yeah. I love dal. <laughs> True. The best thing about Pakistan? The best thing about Pakistan? Pakistanis. Pakistani people, definitely. Then it's time for you to sign our visitor's book. Great. Okay, let's see what you wrote. Pakistan, Spain, Dosti, Zindabad. Great, so you've learned some Urdu as well. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? 
enough. <laughs> enough, 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 enough for this program at yes. least. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much thank you. for thank having you us much. and I hope you continue to enjoy your stay in Pakistan. I will. Rest thank you so much. much. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. a lot. That's it for today. Please join me again next week and don't forget to follow us on social media at indus.news. Goodbye.